Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is The Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather, or the gym. Hello there, a warm welcome to you. It's the Racing Post Football Postcast. I'm Bruce Millington, and today I am joined by Dan Childs, my Racing Post colleague, and from Paddy Power, Jason Murphy. We're getting towards the very last knockings of the football season and it's FA Cup final weekend. Chelsea play Man United on Saturday. We've also got the Scottish Cup final and there's some playoff stuff as well. And of course the following week we've got two absolutely mouth-watering affairs. But before we get stuck into all the Cup final action, we'll have a quick chat because obviously the big talking point this week was the uh, release, the announcement of the England squad for the World Cup. A lot of people suddenly seem to be taken by surprise that we don't have that many good players. But uh, there you go. We'll see what Dan and Jason think about it and we'll see what the betting implications are. First of all, I've got a question for you guys. Saturday week, you've got the uh, Championship Playoff Final and this Saturday you've got the FA Cup Final. If you could only watch one game, which one would it be out of those two, Dan? Oh, it'd be the Playoff Final for me. I'd, I'd... I just think with the FA Cup final, the two teams are not playing that you know that well at the moment. The playoff final is such a big occasion. I like the way the two teams are playing at the moment. A lot of intensity, and I'm really looking forward to seeing that. That's going to be some Saturday, uh, yeah. Jason, isn't it? So you've got five o'clock, you've got the Championship playoff final, and then is it 7.45, the, the uh, Champions League final? Yeah, uh, really looking forward to it. The boys are already planning um, a bit of a night out afterwards. Um, it should be a great day for football. Um, it's actually a silly question to ask you this one, isn't it? Because you're a Man U fan, aren't you? So you're going to say the cup final, aren't you? Uh, the cup final for me, um, I think like the last couple of FA Cup finals have been good. Um, so I'm looking forward to watching it. I think it will be a good game. United, Chelsea, you've the whole Mourinho Conte thing. I know it died down before, but it could flare up again. Um, I think it'll be a good game. We were in the last, uh, the penultimate one, weren't we? Yeah. we you you yeah. lot beat us, didn't you, you bastards? That's right, yeah. Pardo with his, his little dance. He deserved not to oh. win it after that. No, there was nothing <laughs> wrong with that. Why, why does he get slagged off for dancing? When your man Lingard does that stupid dance every time he wins a throw-in. Ah, I don't like it. What happened in last year's cup final? Last year's uh, cup final. It's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> Ask me in 1979 yeah, and I'll yeah. tell you exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, was, yeah the, the Arsenal, wasn't it? That's yeah, it was a great while. game. Yeah, Chelsea sending off and everything in it, 2-1 winner at the end, like Ramsey and everything. Oh, it was a good, it was good, proper cup final. I, I, honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm losing the plot. I can barely <laughs> remember. Anyway, back to England. And Jason, what are the latest odds on when England will depart the World Cup? Yeah, um, so they're 4-1 to go out at the group stage. If you give the fact that they're in with Tunisia and Panama, they really should be getting out of the group. Uh, quarter final, they're 15 to 8 to exit at that stage. Um, they should get through the last 16. They're 15 to 8 go out there as well. But if you look who they'll meet in the last 16, they'll go off as Favs. Um, for Which them is how the group that we, we run into? Um, we're probably going to run into either Brazil or Germany. Uh, you know, unless well, no, no, not in the round of 16. No, 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 in, the quarters, in, the no in the round of 16. No, in the round of 16, Poland or Colombia, if it all oh, works. Okay, out. well, that doesn't yeah. sound yeah. too bad, yeah. does it? Yeah, and then um, if you fancy them to get to the semi-final and knocked out, it's 5-1. To, to get to the final and lose, is 10-1, and they're 14-1 to, to win it out at the moment. 14-1 to, to win it, eh? You rascals, 14s. <laughs> How do you sleep at night laying that rabble at 14s, Jason? Uh, Harry Kane and Jamie Vardy are in serious form. In the view of strikers in form, you've always got a chance. I suppose so. What is your, I mean, it's a dispa is it a dispassionate view because you're Irish, or do you just hate England? Uh, personally, I get great enjoyment though watching the interest that does being in if England do well in the tournament. Like early memories, like France '98 was great. Ireland weren't in it, but England and the Argentina game was like one of my early memories and favourite games to watch. Um, so I'd like to see England get a run in it, just because you're familiar with the players as well. But um, I. I don't want to You'd see hate them, them to win, wouldn't you? I don't want to see them win. <laughs> you would hate to see them win. And can they win, Dan? Um, I would say yes, just. Um, only because I look at the eight teams in, in the, the top eight teams in the betting, I don't see that at this World Cup a single team that is without fault. I, I think there's, you look at last time, Germany looked far and away the, the best team. Even for the tournament, you kind of felt that they were the, the strongest side. I look at Germany now, looked at their performance at the Euros where they lost 2-0 to France. Didn't look the same team. They've lost a few players since the last World Cup. Goethe, who scored the winning goal at the last World Cup final, not even made the squad. They've still got an but issue. But hang on, doesn't that tell you how strong their squad is? We're talking about John Joe Shelby ah. missing out. They've got the fellow who scored the winner last but time. But they're picking Mario Gomez up front 
you know, because they're looking for balance in this squad. They've had an issue at centre forward for a long, long time. They've got some old bloke time. in, haven't they? Some Mario th- Gomez is going to be 33. No, by, there's by, someone else, isn't there? Someone else in that squad who's he, like someone says like the, the equivalent of Glenn Murray getting a, a call up. I can't think who it was, but uh, Neil uh, Peterson is it? Yeah, that's oh, it. Neil yeah. Peterson. Yeah. So, but again, they're they're picking players for the balance of the squad. They've had an issue. I mean, they, they picked closer a, a long time yeah, after yeah, yeah. he was... He still scored, though. He still kept he scoring. He did, but he was, a long time after, after he, when he was past his best, they kept okay, picking so, him. OK, so, so, so without going too yeah. deep into Germany, what yeah. you're saying is that England aren't that every, much inferior every team, to anyone. Every team, you could go into every one of them top teams, and this is why you have to look at some of the other teams to look at it back to England. There's no team that's got a squad where you think, oh, they're strong in every area. So there is, a, there is an argument that England, in a one-off game, once you're at knockouts against any of these teams, they're not without a chance... They've obviously got a chance, haven't yeah, they? It's all yeah. about the odds, isn't it? Any yeah. of the teams oh, yeah, can win yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but, I mean, you know, I think they're between 14 to 1 with uh, stingy bookmakers like Paddy Power. And I think there's a bit of 18s going there. I mean, at what point would you back England then? I think 18s is about right. I don't think it's too short. I, 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 like I say, if you think in England uh, of those top eight are way too big, you have to look at some of the other teams and say, well, you know, they should be a lot shorter. I don't look at a lot of those other teams at the top of the betting and think they should be a lot shorter. So okay. I think it's, it's, it's quite a balanced tournament between those. And I think outside the top eight teams, I do struggle actually to see where there's a winner coming from outside. Okay. Uruguay, I think, are a bit of a dark horse. Uh, Jason, you, uh, Dan's talking about no team being perfect in every area. There'll be some cynics who say England aren't perfect in any area, but you, you highlighted the forwards there. You think they, they might just be the, the key to giving England a decent run in this competition, do you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like any team that goes in, like you look at Ronaldo for Portugal, you know, if Griezmann catches fire for France, you need a striker that's on form if you're going to do well in these competitions. Um, but if I was picking a team, I think Spain are really, well, they were 8 to 1 there. You could have got two months ago on them they're into 11 to 2 now with us um, I think up front like Morata might not even make the squad but Aspas I know he wasn't great when he was at Liverpool but since he's gone back to Celta Vigo has been fantastic I think you stick him up top and you get the likes of Silva playing around him um, I think Spain uh, will for me be Favs for the World Cup they mightn't go off Favs but that's who I'd be tipping to win it they should be Favs what about England then when do you think they'll f- They'll uh, be on the plane back, Jason. Yeah, it's, it's a disappointment. I know like it's it's one of their youngest squads ever. Uh, they haven't got many caps in it, but it's a disappointment if they don't make the quarterfinals looking at the way the draw has worked for them. But having said that, they're going to come up against your Brazil or Germany there, and I, I think that's when it'll be time to book the flights home. I mean, I, I do agree with you. I mean, Kane's form recently hasn't been brilliant. There's a feeling that he came back a bit quick to try and get the boot, but he has still chipped in, hasn't he? And Vardy's probably still actually underrated, isn't he? I mean, he gets all the all the all the all the headlines because you know he's, he used to play for Fleetwood and he's he's you know his surname rhymes with party. But if you, if you actually look at what he does as a footballer, he's probably a bit underrated. Would you not say, Jason? Um, I think Jamie Vardy. I really rate him now against teams that sit back you don't see the best of him but if you look at his record against the top six in the Premier League like it's his, it's probably the best over the last four or five years if defences come out so against Brazil or Germany Vardy could be the way to go because if they're spacing behind Mares picks him out every time with a ball over the top you even look at it you got goal of the season on matches there the other night now wouldn't have been my pick but again it's that long ball Did over the top in the space one? yeah I couldn't Honestly, believe it it's a lovely finish but there's no way that wins yeah, it yeah I was shocked yeah, to be well, honest yeah. I like um, the Bournemouth goal. Yeah, after Charlie Daniels was, was unbelievable. Uh, I think that would have been a higher profile player scored that goal. Yeah, he would have won it for certain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, rem- yeah. I remember that goal yeah. going in, and I remember just yeah. frightening the dog. Yeah. I just suddenly leapt up. I was like, whoa! It was yeah. unbelievable. I yeah. certainly didn't do that with Vardy. I admired the finish. Now, Dan, let's pick the England starting eleven. Yeah, I think uh, the goalkeepers probably. I would go with Butland. I think over Pickford. I, I'm not. Sh- I look at Pickford. Some of his recent performances. Uh, the Burnley away. The the game at West Ham as well. I mean, the two of them goals were his fault, really. So I'm, I'm a bit concerned with Pickford. So we, are we picking the team you'd pick or the team Gareth oh, well, no, Southgate no, will no, pick? No, what do you want me to pick? The, uh, the uh, let's that, do the one you would do. Well, I would go with Butland in goal. Um, I think the, the back three, because he's going to play a back three, pretty much picks itself. Walker, Stones, Maguire, that's, that's uh, I think, the balance there. Uh, Which trip, of the eight right wing-backs he's well, got? Well, yeah, pick? I mean, that's another issue. I mean, the balance of the squad. But I, 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 maybe Trippier, I think, uh, uh, better suited there. Um, of the of the squad he's picked, so you've got to go, I suppose. With depending on the game, you, I would like to see Loftus Cheek with Dyer or Henderson. If you're playing against Panama and Tunisia, I don't see the need to play Dyer and Henderson against those teams. Dyer and Henderson against Belgium. Um, I would go Danny Rose for balance over Ashley Young on the on the left side, and Raheem Raheem Sterling. 
in behind Kane and Vardy. I think Kane and Vardy, that could be the... No Deli Alley. No, I think, uh, I think if you're trying to get Kane and Vardy into the team, you know, two of the top five strikers in the Premier League this season, I don't see why they can't do that with, with Sterling sort of playing uh, tucked in behind. OK, now Jason, you pick the team that you think Gareth Southgate will go with. Put yourself That's, into his shoe, into yeah. his very sensible shoes. <laughs> I think they're going 3-5-2 as well. Um, I'd go with Butland, Pickford, I don't race. Um, any keeper that you know does well in the side got relegated last year, they always look better than what they actually are. If you're looking for top goalies, it's the keepers that only have to he make will go for He will go for Pickford, though. Yeah, you might say he should go for Butland, he will go for Pickford. Yeah, he probably will go for Pickford. Um, I think Gary Cahill, just for experience, I'd have oh. him in with the back three. I'd like I'd have him. I know Phil Jones is is Phil Jones. Oh, I wouldn't have either of them. No. No, no. That's what I'm saying. I've Cahill in ahead of Jones, uh, Stones and Kyle Walker then as well as the back three. Um, will he be brave enough to go with Trent Alexander? It's I not a question see. of being brave. It's a question of being stupid. This this kid's nothing like. He might turn out to be good, but you can't pick him now. Shouldn't have made the squad. I Shouldn't have made no, the no. squad. He's a liability at times, isn't he? Come on, no, Jason. I think he's done very well. He's had a great season and he's great going forward, which is what England will be looking to do in, in most of their games. I think um, Kane and Vardy, if you can get them into the same team, then absolutely um, I'd be in favour of that as well. I don't think he will, though. I think he'll play Kane up top on his own and you'd be looking at maybe Sterling and Rashford playing off him. Really? No, I, th I think he'll find room for Deli Alley in the starting eleven. Yeah, I, I think he'll pick Alley. I mean, I was picking my team there, but I, yeah. I think he's likely to go Sterling, Alley in behind Kane. The, yeah. the alternative to Alley, I think, will be Jesse Lingard, who he does like as well. But uh, I don't think uh, I think Rashford will be an impact sub, certainly right. initially. OK. OK, so we'll see how, how we get on with that. Um, and obviously, don't forget, we will be doing... Loads and loads of postcards all the way through the World Cup, so join us for them. Uh, quickly, from the World Cup to the uh, lower league playoffs, we've got Exeter versus Lincoln on Thursday, Notts County versus Cov on Friday. Jason, give us the latest prices on those two games and then give us a bet for each of them. Yeah, uh, so Exeter are 13 to 8 to win in 90 minutes, 21 to 10 to draw, Lincoln 17 to 10. Uh, Exeter to qualify, 4 to 5, Lincoln 10 to 11. Um, I, luckily, I missed the game at the weekend. It was, it was a bore, bore draw, as far as I know. Um, it's still like it's really tight looking for someone to come out of League Two. Uh, maybe have a go at Exeter just because they're at home. Uh, Stockley's 19 goals in 42 games, so four to one first goal scorer is probably fair enough. Um, that's what I'd be looking at in that game. Okay, and then Notts County v Cov. Yeah, so Notts County 13 to 8 win in 90 minutes, 21 to 10 to draw, 8 to 5 Coventry. Uh, it's picking 5 to 6, 5 to 6 to see who goes through. Uh, this was a great game we caught in the office Saturday night. I thought it was a um, very harsh penalty given against Notts County at the end. Um, but their goal, like it was, it was just a thunderstorm of a night, like loads of water on the pitch, defenders sliding into tackles. Uh, Notts County got a cracker of a goal, great finish by Forte. It was kind of like that Zola flicking it behind you finish. Um, so I fancy Forte to, to start, like he's put him in ahead of Ambiobi, he didn't go for experience. So Forte to start, 11-2 first goal, 23 to 10 any time, and Notts County to, to get through either at 5-6 to six is, is a bet. Dan, what do you make of these two games? Um, I watched the, the, the Exeter-Lincoln first game, it was a terrible game, but, uh, but Exeter I thought played really well in it. Lincoln did the old, the very direct side, aerial bombardment. Uh, balls going up to Matt Reed early and playing off of him. He hit the bar with a, with a decent header, but Exeter actually defended it really, really well and, and looked better on the ball. They're a better football inside, and I thought the nil-nil was a fair result. Now, having done that, and you've then got the home game, they finished about above them in the leagues. Well, Exeter come into it, they were fourth place, Lincoln was seventh, and now it's been priced up as like a your-choice game when Exeter have got home advantage and they've played well in the first leg. So I think don't get too complicated here. Exeter won 15 home games out of 23 in the league season. They've got two key players back as well, just before the, the playoff. Jordan Moore, Taylor, captain, centre back, uh, came back into the side. Ryan Harley as well, creative influence. They, he's come back recently. They look, they look decent at the moment at home. I think they'll be a little bit. They'll play a bit more of their football, and, and uh, they look the, the so the just a neat team. Exeter to win. Exeter, I think you could just back them to win on the ninety. Yeah, okay. yeah get a bit of extra value. The other game, I'm struggling to, to, to pick these. I mean, I, I watched the. It was a really good game, actually. A big big uh, thunderstorm, uh, as was mentioned there. But they both attacked each other. It wasn't a typical, you know, nervy playoff game. They both went for each other. Coventry, the penalty was a joke. I mean, it's uh, should never have been given. But over the game, Coventry. Played some good football. I thought on the balance probably deserved the result. I, I, I can't see 
a, 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 a difference here between these teams. These teams are Coventry got the best attacking players. McNulty's been tearing it up. Got 23 goals in the league this season. They got a very bright midfield prospect, uh, Tom Bayliss as well, 19-year-old who caught the eye in the first leg. I think he could be a, a, a possibility for first goal as well. But uh, is this match, recommendation no bet? I would say uh, Bayliss. Look at his first score price. He's got five goals from midfield this season, but two of them are in the last four games. So he's coming, he's starting to, to flourish at that level. A lot of uh, higher division scouts are looking at him, so I would look at Tom Bayliss's first score price. Righto, cup final next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 80 plus, begumbleaware.org. OK, it's cup final day on Saturday. Chelsea versus Man United at Wembley under the arch, 5.15. What's the latest betting from Paddy Power, Jason Murphy? Yeah, uh, so we've Chelsea fifteen to eight, draw two to one, United thirteen to eight, uh, to lift the cup. We've Chelsea evens and United five to six. Okay, Dan, do you agree with the fact that Man United should be marginal favs? No, I think Chelsea should be marginal favs. Um, I, I would ignore the performance at Newcastle. I mean that that week after the Huddersfield situation, they clearly were mentally they were they were gone going into that game. And previously to that. They've beaten Liverpool uh, 1-0 in a decent performance. That was their fifth successive victory, but that's actually their best run of the whole season. They hadn't won five games in succession for the whole season, Chelsea. So uh, they had been playing pretty well. I'm struggling to think when Man United last played well. I mean, uh, you go back to the semi-final against Spurs, they kind of did what they had to, didn't they? Typical Mourinho performance. Um, it, it nicked a couple of goals, didn't they? Got in front and then defended, did that well, but... And you look after that, the league form, they beat Arsenal Reserve 2-1 with a late goal, didn't they, from Fellaini. Yeah. Um, the, the, the Brighton game, where they've lost 1-0, they were, they were abysmal. The West Ham game, the 0-0, they were abysmal. Lost to West uh, Brom. And, and, and they beat Watford on the last day, 1-0. I think the stats were seven shots each team. They had one shot on target they scored from. I mean, I, I, I just, yeah, the West Brom defeat as well. I, I just can't, I'm struggling to think. Whereas with Chelsea, they've played quite well quite recently. You look back to the Liverpool game, the Burnley game away when they were chasing those... Uh, that fourth spot, they were playing quite well. They've got Giroud's coming with a bit of form. Hazard's always a match winner on his day. I think Chelsea's best, which I think they'll get back near their best for the final, is better than Man United's best. Man United, they're such a a hard team to watch, aren't they? I mean, you you know, they they nick games, they defend well, but Chelsea can defend well as well, and they've got more going forward. So Chelsea for me. Okay, well, we'll see how that translates into actual bets in a minute, Dan, but we'll get Jason's unbiased view on this game. Are you going, Jason? (laughs) Uh, no, I wish it was, but uh, no, I won't make it over. But um, uh, actually, have an Ed Sheeran concert on Saturday. Oh, lovely! Uh, That'll be good, wouldn't it? Have you seen him before, or are you being no, dragged along by reluctant, uh, reluctantly by a girlfriend? Uh, been dragged along, but I've been promised sunshine and a few beers, so it's can't is be it too out, bad. Is it outside? Outside in the Phoenix Park. Um, yeah, you'll get a. I think it's about twenty-five thousand, thirty thousand, maybe. Mate, at. I've seen him live. He's very, very good indeed. I, I think you'll have a good time, mate. I, think I will make a very the most good of it. Time. Anyway. And obviously, you you might be drowning your sorrows, or you might be celebrating <laughs> a, a win for your boys. Which do you think it'll be? Yeah, it's it's, it's like you have to read my notes here. Exact like since United bet Spurs, their league form has been atrocious. I mean, last week they were last up on match of the day against Watford, which really sums up the way they've been playing the last few weeks. But having said that, when they needed the result against Spurs, they got it. Last time they needed a result was the City away game, they got it. Um, Chelsea have had a bit of a run, but at the same time, they were poor against Southampton and, and got a good comeback. Then you're looking at, right, they beat Swansea 1-0, but like Swansea are a shambles. They showed up against Liverpool, but then they, they let it all slip with that draw against Huddersfield. So it's hard to really know where they're at. Um, I think it will be Conte's last game, so he might get a bit of a reaction now with Chelsea. But having said that, I think United will have enough on the day. They'll be cute enough, and I just think United will edge it. Do they hate each other still, the managers? Because around about Christmas time, there was this theory that they were going to end up having a fist fight during the February <laughs> league game, wasn't yeah. it? Have they, have they made it all up, or is, it, is this a the, bit yeah. bubbling animosity? No, before the February league game, they kind of they kind of made peace with it all. But um, again, when it's it's like Mourinho, you know, he's friends with everyone until until you're a danger. So like you know, it's a cup final Saturday, so you won't know what what could come up. OK, chaps, let's get that uh, wisdom translated into bets. Dan, what should we be doing from a betting yeah, I would just go, as I mentioned, I thought the prices to lift the trophy were wrong. So Chelsea... Chelsea Evans to lift, the trophy. To lift yeah, the trophy, yeah? yeah. yeah. No exotics? Um, no, not at the moment. I think, 
I mean, I'd maybe have a look at Giroud, the form that he's in, you know, for the first scorer. But no, I, I just think that Chelsea, for me, would should be a shade of odds on. So Evans is, is a good bet, yeah. Do you know what, Jason? It's 15 years, I think, now since... Is it 15 years since the Millwall game? You're, oh, yeah, you're, yeah, when, yeah. So Dan is a rookie. He's just got a job as, uh, as the Racing Post tipster. <laughs> and we said, right, you can do the specials. You can find out the best bets on the specials in the cup final. So he said, right, this kid who's playing at Man United... <laughs> He's <laughs> eight to one, yeah. Ronaldo, to be yeah. man of the match. It's a ridiculous price. He's the yeah. best player on the pitch. He's totally different class. So Man United go on an absolutely spank Millwall three yeah. nil. He scores two. He's absolutely <laughs> being Ronaldo. He's superb. Everyone's like patting down on the back, saying, "Well done, mate. What a great, what a great tip." They wheel out someone like Carrick or Bruce or someone, don't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because ah, Sven, here's, yeah. here's what happens. Here's what subsequently comes to light. Sven has chosen the man of the match. And he's gone, it's got to be Ronaldo. And they've said, no, no, we need someone who can do an interview in English. And this kid's English is no good. So he's had to choose someone else. <laughs> and so he didn't get paid out. Is that one of the worst hard luck stories ever? That's really unlucky. You should have got Justice Pell on that. That's, that's a shambles. <laughs> Paddy Power would have paid out, wouldn't Absolutely, they? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah. That was desperate. Right then, uh, Jason, what are the bets for the cup yeah, final? Yeah, um, like, this is an unbelievable stat. I had to double check it. Like, Hazard has only scored one goal in his last 16 games. So he's Blimey. really... He's gone airwall. Um, That's amazing. But he Giroud, hasn't started too many of them, has he? No, he has. That's no, the thing. He even got like 120 minutes there against Leicester in the FA Cup, like you know, and what? still, still didn't score. But um, from that point of view, I think he's a bit short. I think Giroud is in form, um, and he's got course and distance as well. Like he scored in a cup final before. He got the winner against Southampton in the semi final. He got that winner against Liverpool recently when they needed it. Um, so I think 13 to two first goal scorer or 11 to four any time for Giroud is a hell of a bet. Now, and what price is he to start? Do you think, Jason? For me, he starts. Absolutely. Yeah, I know for you, but you're not yeah. picking a team. Uh, uh, for me, it's it's one to two. Uh, I'd be surprised if he. I'd, I'd have to go with Giroud. I'd be, now, having said that, if he does start with Morata, Giroud off the bench is um, the all-time Premier League top goal scorer for a player coming off the bench with 19 goals. So even get a bet in play, like if Chelsea are chasing, he'll be worth a bet. Or if United are chasing, they're, they're going to be vulnerable at the back. Um, so definitely Giroud, I think, for a goal on, on Saturdays, whatever way you can get on him, I'd be having a, having a look. And there's no harm in the 13-2, because if he, if, he if he doesn't start and there's a goal before he comes on, you're in, aren't you? So that's, yeah. that's all good. I fancy him to start, Giroud. You fancy yeah, him to start? Yeah, the way he's been playing lately. Yeah, will, yeah. It, will it be him starting in, in, front of, in front of Hazard and Will Iron? I would, I would think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, there is, there's occasions when he's gone... More negative than that, and and, and had Sesk as one of the two as in behind, but no, I mean he's not done that recently. So, okay. uh, and I just think not just how well Giroud's playing. Morata hasn't been doing it for a no, long time. Shocking! Has he? So, shocking! You know. Any any likely surprises in the Man U team selection? Do you think, Jason? Uh, no, Martial was meant to start against Watford, but he injured his knee in training Friday, so he's a doubt. They're expecting Lukaku to be back. Um, it's quite a big deal, that isn't it? I mean, presumably that would be market altering if Lukaku wasn't. Oh, absolutely, big, it? absolutely, it would be. Uh, Messi Lingard, as we call him now, um, he has scored in cup finals before the League Cup against Southampton. I don't want to against... hear about that. Shush. Well, look, uh. all right, okay. Um, so I think you know Lingard, he does it in finals as well, nine to one for first goal score. I also think the last two FA Cup finals we've seen red cards. Uh, Michael Oliver as well is the is going to be reffing it and like you've seen what he did with Buffon he's not afraid to show a red card and the FA Cup quarter final last year um, he sent off Fiera as well like it was Fiera's fault it was two yellow cards in quick succession but you know if someone does make a tackle which I think they will on Saturday it'll be a tasty game um, there could be a red card so 10 to 3 for a red card 10 is, to looks, 3 a red card that does yeah. sound decent that right what's good. the score going to be Jason? Um, I think we're going to get another cup final cracker. You'll see both teams score. I think we'll see maybe 2-1, maybe a winner in the last 10 minutes. All going well. 2-1 to Chelsea? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I you, didn't say that. Generally speaking, with correct scores, you have to kind of specify which team's going to do the scoring. So go on, what are you going to go for? You're, going, you're not going United 2-1, are you? Well, I tell you, we've released a new product this week uh, on Paddy Power. It's same game multiples. So if you're looking to place a relatable bet uh, where before you'd have to you know, request it, you can actually build your own bet on site now. So for argument's sake, if you wanted to back that red card, Drew, any time, and say he it to be booked as well, which I think like it's, it's evens with us. There's 6-4 to four out there, which is a bet. Like you can build that bet yourself on site at 28-1. to one, And if you fancy Chelsea 2-1 correct score, you can throw that in there as well. 
Good. Sounds decent. Dan, what's the score going to be? Um, uh, 1-0 Chelsea. You know, I didn't score against Brighton, didn't score against West Brom, didn't score against West Ham. You know, there's every chance they won't score against Chelsea. Yeah, I think it's going to be an absolutely horrible, despicable <laughs> spectacle. Let's do the Scottish Cup final next. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply, 18plusbgumbleaware.org. So, three o'clock on Saturday afternoon, presumably at Hamden Park. Celtic v Motherwell, what's the latest betting from Paddy Power? Yeah, so Celtic are 1-4 to four to win in 90 minutes, 9-2 to, to draw, Motherwell 8-1. to one. So, to lift the cup, uh, Celtic 1-9, to nine, Motherwell 4-1. to one. Is there anything in Motherwell's uh, recent or overall um, form that gives them a glimmer here, Dan? They have, uh, their form has picked up a little bit recently, but that's partly due to the fact they were, they were in the bottom part of the, after the split, so they've been playing against you know, weaker teams in the SPL. So, uh, now the short answer is, is no, really. Uh, they, the league, this is a repeat of the, of the Scottish League Cup final, which Celtic won 2-0 pretty comfortably. I don't really see any change here. Looking to last season, Celtic have actually got worse since last season. They're, they're 24 points less than last season, have Celtic. They? Yeah, 24? even though they've won the league. They got, a, they got 106 points last season, which was incredible. I mean, they only drew four games, won the rest. Uh, 82 points this year. Uh, Motherwell have actually got 10 more points than the previous year, so they're up to 48 this year. But a lot of those, a few of those were accrued after the split. So it's probably more than they should have got, really. But um, no, I, I mean, Motherwell getting to the final, they've beaten four SPL teams, uh, beaten uh, Hamilton, Dundee, Hearts, you know, a bit more impressive, and Aberdeen, they beat it 3 0 in the semi final. So that's a, a feather in their cap, if you like. But uh, I'd just struggle to see where their goals are going to come from. They sold uh, Lewis Malt. Uh, to Preston in January, he was he's got eight goals. He's their top scorer still this season. They sold him in January to Preston, so I, I struggle to see where the goal is going to come from. Celtic have gone off the boil since winning the title. They beat Rangers, uh, I think it was uh, four 0 to win the title. They've gone off, no, it might have been five 0 They've gone off the boil since then. Lost to Kilmarnock, I think one 0 No, lost to Aberdeen one 0 Drew with Kilmarnock nil nil. Both at Parkhead, so they have they have eased off after winning the title. But when they need to win a game. They tend to win it. They also beat Rangers in the semi-final, uh, 4-0 in the semi-final. So, What's the bet then? Well, this is a game, Celtic, you know, a bit like Chelsea really, you know, now, now that it's a, it's a big game that they need to be up for it. I'm sure they'll be back near their best. Celtic, Celtic, uh, double result for me, 8-11. to 11. They're so short, I think, to win on the 90 that it's not worth it. But Celtic, Celtic, uh, half-time, full-time, 8-11. to 11. Jason, have you got a strong view on this one? Uh, yeah, just back Celtic all day long. Um, like Motherwell, in the league, they did draw twice with Celtic at home at Fir Park. Um, now Celtic were going off about one to four in, that, in the first game, and that was back when there was still something to play for. The last time the league was wrapped up, so the prices look about right. Um, Louis Moult going to Preston is a big loss for them. Um, now they did have a great result against Aberdeen in the semi-final themselves, Motherwell, and both their strikers Main and Bowman uh, showed up on the day. But it's still very hard to see past Celtic. Um, I think Dembele, if he starts, he's been taking penalties. It used to be Scott Sinclair, but the last time the two of them were on a pitch and got a penalty, Dembele took it. So maybe Dembele 3 1 for first goal. Um, there is a Carl McHugh that plays uh, for Motherwell. He's been booked the last three times he's played against Celtic. Now, there's no booking markets out yet, but he's picked up like 13 yellows and one red card in 35 oh, what's matches. What's his name? Carl McHugh. So keep an eye out for him when booking markets go up. Um, other than that, Tom Rogic is three goals in eight games. I think he's he's always good for an any time bet, um, seven to four in places. But it's it's hard to see Motherwell getting the result. I know it's a cup final and like they have drawn earlier in the season, but I think Celtic will because it's a cup final, it'll be up for it more so than it would have been in the last couple of weeks. Jason, do you have a leaning towards either of the big sides in Scotland, Celtic or Rangers? Um, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I'm not a fan of Scottish football. Like I will keep an eye on it. I'd like to see Celtic do well when they're in the Champions League, but um, I mean, there's local games down in Carlow where you'd see better football. Fair enough. Okay, Steve Palmer, take it away. This will not be beaten. Jason Murphy, any bet, any match this weekend, any market? What's your nap? Yeah, so we're going over to Serie A, where there's still a couple of things to play for. Atlanta are away to Calgary. Now, Calgary need a win to guarantee staying up, but even if they lose, it'll be a couple of results that'll send them down. But Atlanta, they've been underrated by the market all season, really, and I think they're not accounting for the motivation that if Atlanta win to get straight into the Europa League groups, provide Milan don't beat Fiorentina. 
Whereas if they don't during the Europa League qualifiers, and that means players have to come back early from holidays and they won't want to do that. So Atlanta are 5-4 to four to win at Calgary. I think if this was mid-season, they're going off at evens or shorter. So Atlanta at 5-4 is a bet. Perfect. They've only, yeah, they've only, like if you look at their last 11 games, they've only lost one and they've won seven, which in Serie A is like, it's a great record. Okay, I thought you said we were going to go to Syria. I thought it was going to tip up <laughs> Rael Damascus or someone. Um, Dan, what's your name? I'll, I'll stick with, with Chelsea to, to win the FA Cup at evens. I just think they should be odds on. And uh, yeah, evens uh, does it for me. Yeah. Okay, and I think, like I said, the FA Cup's going to be a horrible game. And if you want to benefit from that, you can back under one and a half goals at 13 to 8. Thank you very much indeed, chaps. We're back next week to look, like I said, towards that fantastic double header, Villa versus Fulham and Liverpool versus Roma. And don't forget, if you do enjoy the podcast, please do rate, review and subscribe on iTunes. Follow Paddy Power on Snapchat. The username is The Paddy Power, and we promise there won't be any boring snaps about gigs, the weather or the gym.